welcome to How to Play Video, HTPV. This is your host, Ryan Sturm, and this podcast is about learning and teaching games. In each episode, I give an explanation of how to play a game, just as if I was sitting across the table from you and we were about to play the game together. This podcast is intended to be used to learn about a game you may not know much about, learn how to play a game by yourself, or to serve as a model on how to explain the rules of this game or others. This video series is based on my original audio series, of which there are explanations of over 20 great games and special shows, including my primer on teaching games, my countdown of my top 50 games, and much more. Check out all the How to Play episodes from my website, howtoplaypodcast.com, or they're linked from my guild at BoardGameGeek. If you like the show, I hope you'll join and participate in our guild at BoardGameGeek. For more information about all the How to Play podcast episodes, these fabulous how to play teaching guides, and the discussion forums refer to the how to play geek list for which you can find a link at the guild. I can be contacted at the guild on BoardGameGeek or directly at my email address, howtoplaypodcast at msn.com. And I want to mention that adding video adds a lot more cost to the show, so I hope you'll consider making a PayPal donation at my website. And I need to say a big thank you to Randall Rasmussen for putting the video for this show together. Now... Let's get to today's episode. How to Play, Episode 5, Tigris and Euphrates. Tigris and Euphrates, this game is for people who like heavy strategy games. It's also for people who don't mind if the game is more abstract than really thematic. Uh, This is not really going to feel like developing ancient civilizations. It's really, at its core, a heavy abstract strategy game. There's also a lot of conflict going on in this game, a lot of back and forth. And if you have people who don't like that, it may not be for them. This game also has a large learning curve. So if you have people who that appeals to, that they like getting good at games and playing them over and over again, then this is definitely going to be a winner. If you have people who like to play a new game every week and this isn't going to see the table much more than once and once or twice, stay away from this one. This is not a game for casual gamers, non-gamers, or people who like lots of theme in their game, or like to just play for fun it's kind of a serious game and a player playing just randomly and not really thinking about their actions can really mess up this game. In short, this is a gamer's game in the truest sense of the words. Don't please don't make your grandma or uncle or seven-year-old child play this game. It will not be a good experience. So I'm glad you did choose this game and here's why. This game is a great example of using the theme of the game to teach mechanics. As I said, you really will not feel any sense of building a civilization in this game, even though this is the theme of the game. However, when you're learning the game, the theme can be a very useful tool in helping your players understand and remember the rules. You may notice the vocabulary I use, and this is very important. Instead of black piece or black leader, I use the term black king. Instead of the term internal conflict and external conflict, I'm going to use the terms revolution and war. This vocabulary, I think, makes the game much more approachable and easier to learn. So a last note here. I want you to be aware that the terms revolution and war are not in the rule book. I'm using them to replace the terms internal conflict and external conflict because I think these terms, revolution and war, are more intuitive. So whenever something is referred to as an internal conflict in the rule book, that's what I'm calling a revolution. And an external conflict, I'm going to be referring to as a war. And finally, a warning. Beware, there are a lot of silly voices in this episode. I've been watching a little bit too much Monty Python recently, and I'm afraid it's had its influence. You have been warned. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get to the hook. Part 1. 
the hook, what this game is about. Welcome to the Fertile Crescent at the dawn of civilization. You are a powerful family in Mesopotamia, looking to stamp your mark on history by leading the people in the development of new civilizations. <coughs> Phew. Throughout the game, your leaders will earn you points by advancing people in four categories. Settlement, religion, farming, and commerce, represented by the four colors, black, red, blue, and green, respectively. On your turn, you will get to take two actions with the choices of laying a tile, laying or moving a leader, playing a catastrophe tile, or sweeping your tiles. The most common actions you will do on a turn are laying a tile and laying or moving a leader. So on most of your turns you'll simply either lay two tiles or lay a tile and a leader or lay two leaders and collect your points, refresh your tiles up to six, and your turn is over. That's it. Throughout the game, kingdoms on the board will grow, merge, war, and revolt. At the end of the game, when all the dust clears, the family who has advanced the people the most in all four categories will win the game. To determine a winner, each player will look at their four colors of cubes representing their points and counts how many cubes they have in the color that they have the least of. For example, at the end of the game, say I had 12 black cubes, 9 red cubes, 10 blue cubes, and 13 green cubes. My final score for the game would be simply 9. So, the player who develops these four categories, not only the most, but the most equally in all four colors, will be known throughout history as the greatest ruling dynasty of all time, and win the game. Thank mm -hmm. you.